worship you. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you. Worship. Hallelujah. Come on and cry out to him. Hallelujah. We worship you in the spirit. We definitely worship you in truth. And that's what we've come to do today. We're just pausing right here to give you an opportunity to give. And so we ask that you would get yourselves ready to be able to bless the Lord through your giving this afternoon. And to those of you that are tuned in from wherever you are, thank you so much for joining in with us today from your living room, from your car, from wherever you may be as we prepare to give. And so first of all, we want you to be reminded that we do a call and response because we want to speak some things into the atmosphere concerning our giving. And so I just simply ask that you repeat after me. God loves a cheerful giver and he supplies all of our needs. According to his riches, in glory, by Christ Jesus. In this season, I am believing God for increases, money-making ideas, jobs or better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, settlements, estates and inheritances, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, found money, debts demolished, royalties received. I decree and declare that our church, my church, is a million dollar house and we are million dollar people. By faith, we declare that we shall prosper and be in health even as our souls prosper. In Jesus' name, somebody say yes and amen. So again, we ask that you prepare through the digital platforms. Giving information is on your screen. And so we ask that you do any of those that you can. And for those of you that are here, you can give through cash or through any of the apps that we use or through uh, check, however you wish to do that. Remember, every month we're looking for 100 people to partner with us by simply giving $20. Again, every month we're looking for 100 individuals to partner with us to simply give us $20. So we're going to pause for a moment here and allow the band to play to give you some time to give. I just want to remind you about sleeves up. What's that about? I thought you would never ask. If you haven't received your vaccination yet, we're going to be doing that right here at Life Church on July 30th from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Again, July 30th from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. So here's a number that you'll need to take down. I'll give you a second. 
863-420-5457. And you can just simply text or call that number to register. And you just simply need to wear your mask when you come. Again, July 30th here at Life Church, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. to receive your vaccine. All right. And then on August 8th, we are going to be giving away some sneakers to the children and families that sign up for it. So we're calling it Stride, and it's an annual thing that we do. It's our sneaker giveaway. So we ask that you, you can just go on our website, and there's a link there where you can actually sign up and register for your family, and there's some information there. Again, we're going to do it from 4.30 6.30 on August 8th here at Life Church. And that's, again, we're, we were trying to help the families out in this community by giving the children sneakers to be able to wear to school. And somebody say solemn assembly. Yeah, so we're so excited about it because it is going to be a grand occasion. It is in the month of September, September 8th, 9th, and 10th, 7.30 p.m., nightly and we'll give you more information about the location and all of that as we get closer but we want you to get excited we want you to start praying and we want you to be in attendance because it's going to be a grand occasion there are going to be some things happening and that friday night is what we call an, a, the official night where some big things are going to happen for some people that are part of the ministry right now there are going to be four churches involved they're coming from different parts of the state and we're going to gather and expect god to show up and meet us here every night the 8th, the 9th, and the 10th. And we're just looking for him to do great things. So if you have things on the altar, if you have things that you've been praying about, if you have things that are in your body that are just not right, then guess what? I invite you to come to Solemn Assembly one of those nights, all three of those nights if you can, and watch God work a miracle in your life because when the saints get together, God has got to show up. The Bible says where two or three are gathered in his name, he'll be there in the midst. And so we're expecting him to manifest himself in a big way during Solemn Assembly. And so please be mindful of those announcements as we govern ourselves accordingly. Well, we're getting ready to shift here now because it's that time of service where we look for God to do things simply through his word and through the woman of God. And so we're excited for all the things that God is doing through her and for her. And so it is she that will be sharing the word of God with us today. I'm going to ask that you take a moment and stand. And even those of you that may be from a distance, the songwriter said there's harmony. <laughs> I'm going to ask that you receive the woman of God, our pastor, the lady of the house, the chief apostle, the one, the only, T. Lashana Hamilton, as she brings forth the word of God to us today. Come on and put your hands together and bless the Lord. Hallelujah, for the Bible declares that wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah, I want you to know that we've been made free today because the Lord is in this place. Those of you that are watching, we greet you in Jesus' name. I want you to know that you're free today. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Because the presence of the Lord is nigh you. Clap those hands one more time. Let's give God praise. Again, we greet you in Jesus' name. We say a good God bless you to everyone. You may be seated, those that are here. Hallelujah. We thank God for all of you in your respective places. We thank God for all of the elders, the ministers, the pastors. Thank God for Pastor Marvin. Amen. Glory to God. Elder Natasha. Thank God for them. Hallelujah. They help make sure that things are running smoothly on Sundays. And we just bless the Lord for each of you. Can we clap our hands for these awesome worship leaders? Hallelujah. Singing so well. Hallelujah. Thank God. Can you give God praise for these dynamic musicians? Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 
we bless God for all of you. Hallelujah. They came to play. Hey, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And they came to sing. Amen. I heard them when I was in the back and God was moving. Hallelujah. And I'm just telling you, glory to God, that there are some great things, some mighty things, some wonderful things that God is doing in our lives. Clap your hands for our up and coming drummer, Brother Jaquel. Come on. Yeah, he, there it is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's going to be one of the greatest drummers in the land. Watch what I tell you. Praise the Lord. We thank God for everybody uh, in your respective places. It's good to have our guests with us that are here today. It's good to see y'all again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for you all. Let's give God praise for the intercessors. Hallelujah. Who come in and start praying and getting things under control. Amen. And thank you all for hanging out with us. Those of you that are tuned in through the technical difficulties. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can we give a big good God bless you to Brother Shaq? Hallelujah. 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 You got to be, you got to be anointed to put up with Pastor T. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so I thank God for his anointing to help us with the sound. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Clap it up for Brother Shaq. Praise the Lord. I appreciate you, man. Hallelujah. Thank God for you. I, I'm going to do my best not to hold us long. Let, let me tell you why. You ready? You know I got to make you laugh, right? I got to make you, <laughs> I got to make you laugh. <laughs> well, let me tell you why we're not going to be in church long. You ready, mama? You know, let me tell you why. They told me it's National Ice Cream Day. I'm getting up out of here. I got somewhere to be around by 830. I got to go get me some ice cream. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to, I like to... I like to make you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. I like to make you all laugh, but I'm serious about that. I am going to get me some ice cream at the church. Hallelujah. And I got it, I got it. So I can't preach long. Amen. But I want to, I want to speak effectively to us. Uh, I was, I was in a prayer. I've been in a, a time of just personal, private meditation and intercession um, just for maybe about the last month or so. I've been being a bit more intentional about spending that extra time in the presence of the Lord. And the Lord um, has really just been dealing with me uh, about some things. And, and so one of the things that the Lord said to me was, if you want to see the ministry go to higher heights and to accomplish things that the ministry has not accomplished in the way that you function as a ministry, you will have to change. I said, okay. And so the Lord said, you know, he's just dealing with me. I'm not going to tell you everything that he said, but just in, in some, certain things that we've gotten comf comfortable in doing, um, there are going to be some changes and they're not, not bad changes. You know, sometimes we say change is inevitable and it is. Things are going to change. Hey, Bible, it's good to see you, darling. Things are going to change and we must be um, prepared. But what I've come to know is that whether we're prepared or not, things are going to change. Amen. So it's better to be prepared for the change opposed to being caught off guard. And so we're going to allow the Lord uh, to just process us and change us and shift us. I don't know what all the change will entail, praise the Lord, but I'm in expectation of all of the wonderful things that God is going to do because what I do know is this. We've got some promises from God. Hallelujah. Now, as a church and as individual pe people, we've got some things that God has promised us and I'm waiting, hallelujah, for them to come to pass. Hallelujah. Can we give God praise one more time? Let's go to the book of Samuel. Hallelujah. I'm going to do my best to get us out of here in a few minutes. Hallelujah. Just a few minutes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to 1 Samuel chapter 17. It is a very familiar passage of scripture. Thank you, Jesus. The word of the Lord is blessed. First Samuel chapter 17, verse number 48. It reads as such. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came 
and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. And the men of Israel and of Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines until thou come to the valley and the gates of Ekron. And the wounded of the Philistines fell down by the way to Shairam, even unto Gath and unto Ekron. And the children of Israel returned from chasing after the Philistines and they spoiled their tents. And David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem, but he put his armor in his tent. God, we thank you that the word of the Lord is forever blessed. We give you praise and glory and honor for all that's been said and done in this space on today. Take us further now as only you can. Let revelation knowledge flow freely in this place. God, you speak to us as only you can. We give you permission to exercise your authority in our lives. I pray no flesh get the glory in your presence today. But God, you get all of the glory because all of the glory belongs to you. Father, I thank you for the angels of the Lord that are in the four corners of this room ready to minister to us as we minister to you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Father, we thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your word. We bind every hindering spirit, every spirit of distraction. We come against you now in the name of Jesus. And I decree and declare that our hearts, our minds, our ears be open to receive what the spirit has to say unto us. Father, I pray that you take these eyes, you see through them. You take this mouth, you speak through it in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I thank you, God, that you're performing miracles, signs, and wonders even now. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor as I decrease. Let your Holy Spirit increase in me even the more it is my prayer time, Spirit. That the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart would be acceptable in thy sight. For you are my Lord, you are my strength, and you are my Redeemer. It is in Jesus' name that I pray this prayer. The matchless name of Christ that I ask all of these things. And all the people of God shouted yes and amen. Come on, clap your hands for the reading of the word of the Lord. We thank the Lord, hallelujah, for what he is doing for such a time as this. Uh, as we have entered, glory to God, into a new week, we know that this is the start of a new week. I need you to understand that the start of anything always represents your ability to be able to start fresh. Praise the Lord. I need you to understand that whenever, hallelujah, you get the opportunity to start a thing, hallelujah, it is God showing us that we have the ability, hallelujah, to gain greater ground. It is God showing us that we have opportunity, glory to God, hallelujah, to walk into new doors, hallelujah, hallelujah, walk into new things, experience new things, glory to God, because there is greater, always greater in store for us. What the enemy would try to make us believe is that because our lives are not where we may want them to be, hallelujah, that it's over for us, but would you believe me if I told you that you are just getting started, hallelujah. I want you to understand and realize today, hallelujah, that what the Lord has in store for you, you have not even began to scratch the surface of it, but you have to know it within yourself. You have to know it within your mind. Whatever you think about yourself is what is going to manifest itself in your life. Hallelujah. Whatever you put your mind on, whatever you put your heart to, it is what you will see. Hallelujah. A, a manifestation or what the results will be in your your life. That's, that is why it is very important that we keep our minds on the things of God. The Bible put it this way, if we, if we keep our minds on him, he would keep us in perfect peace. Us being in peace, glory to God, is contingent upon where, what, where we are in our minds. Are you here? If you are not in peace, if you are in turmoil, if you are in confusion, hallelujah, if you are in distress, I can almost guarantee you that your mind is out of place. 
place. Are you listening to me? And so then we must understand that if we are going to our next place, somebody say, oh, I'm going. If I got to go all by myself, I promise I'm going to my next level. I'm tired of being where I am. I'm tired of being in this place. I'm ready to expand my borders. I'm ready to reach my greatest potential. Oh, I'm going if I have to go by myself. However, I must make sure that my mind is in the proper place because if I don't go in peace, hallelujah, I will not be able to enjoy where it is I am going. Therefore, I must keep my mind on him so that he can keep me in perfect peace. So many times we want God to do everything, Benita, but we don't want to do anything. But the Bible says, glory to God, that he, he moves according to how we move in that regard. Hallelujah. And so we must make sure that our minds are taking up the right space, that our minds are taking up the right residence, that our minds are taking up the right location so that we can be everything God has called us to be. Somebody say hallelujah. You need to understand, hallelujah, that you are in a time where your potential now is about to be revealed. Glory to God. You got to understand, hallelujah, that there is possibility and capability within you. Are you here? Glory to God. You got to understand, hallelujah, that there is development within you, but you got to believe it. You got to believe in yourself. You got to believe in your power. You got to believe in your gifts. You got to believe in your talents. You got to believe that I'm just as good as they are. Hallelujah. I'm just as anointed. I'm just as gifted. I'm just as talented. I'm just as smart. If my classmates can make straight A's, so can I. Hallelujah. If my classmates can get a 4.0, so can I. Are you here? If my classmates can graduate cum laude and summa cum laude, so can I. Simply because God is no respecter of persons. The same anointing that is at work in them, is at work in me. I just have to learn how to believe in what God has said concerning me. Shout hallelujah. When you start to believe in you, your life begins to shift. When you start to believe in you, things start getting better. When you start to believe in you, your money starts getting better. I told a friend the other day, I'm not investing Brother Shaq in anybody else until further notice but me. See, see, I'm betting on me every chance I get. Because I understand that there is something great that God has placed on the inside of me. And Didi, I can't go wrong betting on me. I might lose my money betting on somebody else. But I can't go wrong betting on me. Because I understand where my help comes from. Clap those hands and shout glory. You must understand that you have potential. You have to understand, glory to God, that there is great possibility within you. The possibility to be great. The possibility to be powerful. The possibility to be a household name. I used to always say, when I was about five or six, that I would be known all over the world. Glory to God. I used to always say that people would hear my voice in other countries, on the islands, and every place else. Glory to God, and I've seen that Come into, come into fruition to some regard or another. Now, glory to God, when I was a, a child, I said those types of things. Kevin, as I grew older, around about 13, 14, 15, I started saying, I'm going to be a millionaire. It got so good to me, Pastor Monica. When I got about 20, I made a banner because we used to have, you know, used to make the banner piece by piece. Then you had to tape it together to make it read well across the the wall. I made a banner. It took me forever. But once I finally got it done, CC, I hung it up on my wall so that every time I entered in and out of my room, it didn't matter how mad I got about life. It didn't matter about how bad I was up against the wall. It didn't matter about how broke I was. Every day before I closed my eyes, I would have to look up and see the words, I am a millionaire. Oh, because I understood that the God I served, it didn't really make a lot of sense to me in the natural, but my spirit understood what the old saints meant when they said he only 
own the cattle on a thousand hills. It made sense to my spirit when I would hear them say, he's rich in houses and land. Not only that, but I heard them say, he got the whole world in the palm of his hand. And so it made me some kind of way believe that because he was my Lord and believe that because I served him, I had a right to be wealthy. Are you listening to me today? Come on, clap those hands and shout, yeah. So then we understand as we realize who we are and as we realize that we must put and keep our minds in the right place, we understand that the proper positioning of our minds sets us up for success. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean that every day is going to be perfect. It doesn't mean that I won't have some issues. It doesn't mean that I won't have some struggles, but it means that nothing will cause the position or the location of my mind to be moved because I need to be able to do the things that I do not just in peace but I need to be able to do them in perfect peace. Are you hearing me? There is a difference in peace and perfect peace. The word perfect means mature. Hallelujah. It means that I don't let little petty things stop me from fulfilling my God-given assignment and my God-given potential. Hallelujah. And so, this is what I need for us to understand today. I said, Lord, what do you want me to say to the people of Life Church today? And the Lord said, tell Life Church Tell Life Church and everybody that will tune in and those that will watch the replay, glory to God, and those that will click on the, on the program, hallelujah, by accident that didn't mean to click on it, tell them they have potent potential. I said, okay. What do, how do you want me to convey that? The Lord said to tell us today, glory to God, that there is great possibility that lies within you. When something is potent, hallelujah, it is strong. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Glory to God, if you, if you, if you walk by someone, hallelujah, and you've got a strong fragrance on, that fragrance is said to be potent because of the strength of it when it hits your nostrils. Hallelujah. Sometimes when something is real potent or real expensive, I'll say, glory to God. Hallelujah. You can smell them before you see them. And God said, tell you, that's what's about to happen in your life. Before they see you coming, hallelujah, they're going to already know that you are coming. Kevin, I'm almost ready. I got to go get my ice cream. I need you to understand that there have been some giants that have been against you. Some giants that have been against your people. Some giants that have been against your potential. Hallelujah. But I heard the Lord say, tell the people your potential is potent. Come on, say hallelujah. I need us to realize, uh, hallelujah, that what the Lord uh, has placed in us, uh, it is a strong thing. Uh, it's powerful. Uh, hallelujah, it's big. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, and they're about to, hallelujah, know that you're coming uh, by the fragrance uh, before they see you coming. Uh, come on, say yes. Uh, you need to realize, believers, uh, that every giant uh, that has come against you, uh, the Lord said to tell you, uh, I've anointed you uh, to stand against it. Every giant that is facing your people, I've anointed you to stand against it. I need you to realize that there is nothing too big for God. Listen to me carefully. It doesn't matter how bad it looks. It doesn't matter how bad you feel. It doesn't matter how hard it may feel. But I need you to know uh, that there is nothing uh, too big for God. Uh, I'm about to put myself on the clock right here. Uh, I need you to realize uh, that your potential, uh, it is potent. Uh, come on, say hallelujah. 
Your potential has power. Your potential has influence. Your potential has an effect. Stop letting people make you believe that you are of no significance. Stop allowing people to make you feel as if you have no influence. Stop allowing people to make you feel as though because you are not perfect, you are not potent. The devil is a liar. I came to tell us in here tonight, in here today, and in here tomorrow that you've got potent potential. Well, I better hurry up and rush to my seat here now. You need to understand, glory to God, that whenever something is potent, hallelujah, is strong, this is not the time nor the hour for any of us to be weak. Come on, say it. You cannot afford to be weak in this hour because there's a giant that you're about to go up against. Say, I need you to understand that glory to God that this giant that you're about to go up against is probably the biggest thing that you've ever faced. When somebody shout, I've got potent potential. God on my side. Come on, say amen. Well, I believe I'm ready to ride now. I need you to understand that the man David, he was in a position where he had to face the giant. You gotta be ready to face the giant when the time comes. The Bible, the Bible says, hallelujah. I'm at verse 45. Then said David to the Philistine, thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I Come to thee in the name of the Lord, say, Lord of hosts, the God of armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Make sure that when you go up against this next giant, that you're going in the name of the Lord. Yes, I know I got power. Yes, I know I'm anointed. Yes, I know I got potential, but I'm not coming. CC in my own name. I'm coming in the name of the Lord of hosts. I'm coming in the name of Jehovah, Nisi, oh my banner of victory. Say, yeah, this day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the hosts of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the earth that all the earth may know that there is not a David but a God in Israel. We're living Tisa in a time where the earth needs to be reminded mama that there is a God yet Lord feel like preaching here the Bible Bible says and all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear for the battle is the Lord's I'm in the fight but the battle is the Lord's say yeah come on say yeah and he will give 
give you into our hands. I got about three minutes and I gotta go. Bible, Bible say, and it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David. David hasted and ran toward the army. Make sure when fighting time comes, you run toward the army, not from the army. Remember, this ain't the time to be weak. You've got potent, potential. Say yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And David put his hand in his bag, took hints, took vents, a stone, slang it, and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead and fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. He had already killed the giant. He did not need the sword to kill the giant. But he needed it to fulfill the promise of the word. Shout, shout, shout. Yeah! Yes, Lord. Feel pretty good in here tonight. He had no sword in his hand. Therefore, David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof, slew it, and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistine saw that champion was dead, they fled. What are you saying? Not only have you been anointed to do more with less, you've also been given the permission by God to kill the thing that's trying to kill you. You've been given permission by God to slay the thing that's trying to slay you. You have been given, 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 given permission by God not only to kill them but to cut off their head off with the head of every liar off with the head of every demon off with the head of every backbiter that's trying to destroy me Come in the name of the God of the armies of the Lord of hosts. And I have been given permission not just to fight you, but to kill you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm killing the thing that's trying to kill. I'm slaying the thing, Tasha, that's trying to kill me. Shout it! Come on, 
I'll praise Him. I've got force. I've got authority. Influence. And I'm powerful. 
when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, the Bible says they fled. Would you believe me if I prophesied to you and tell you that you're about to stop running from them and they're about to start running from you? You've been on the run long enough, saith God. Oh, my ande cobre calaban sin. I'm causing you to walk in victory so that the friends of your enemy will flee from you. So, so, so many times we are defeated, walk in defeat, and in places we should not walk in because we are running on the run from the giant and everyone that's connected to it. What the Lord said in this move, in this shift, I'm causing you, I've given you potent potential to slay the giant, cut off his head, and when his people see that their champion is dead, they're going to flee from you. I'm moving some people out of your way, saith the Holy Ghost because of what I am about to do in your life. It's something big. I always say it. It's something spectacular. It's something supernatural. But I got to move the giant and his army out of the way. I've given you potent potential. You're in the fight, yes. But the battle is the Lord's. And all you got to do is use your sling and your rock and I promise you he's coming down you'll take his weapon and kill him chop off his head <laughs> you'll take his weapon not to, to kill him but to chop off his head and this will be a sign that I've given you potent potential based upon your ability through God to slay the giant. For the Lord says, I have given you permission to kill the thing that's trying to kill you. Ooh, if I felt a little bit better, I'd just jump straight off this stage and start running. They say, don't do it. I'm giving you permission to slay the thing that is trying to slay you. Hallelujah. Well, maybe you're watching, you say, Pastor, listen, if you're here also, you say, Pastor, this word was for me. I just, I'm just in a place where I, <laughs> I, I know I'm facing some stuff and I, I just want to be saved. Let's start there. Let's start there. I want to be saved. I need to give the Lord my life. I need to make him my personal savior. Say this with me, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I repent of my sins. I make you my Lord and savior. I believe that you hung, bled, died, and rose for me on the third day. As a result of my confession and my belief, I know I am saved. Thank you, Lord. If you said that prayer with me, we're rejoicing. We believe you got born again. Maybe you're saying, Pastor T, listen, I'm already saved, but I need to be a part of a church. And I kind of like what I'm seeing at Life Church. Listen, I always say this all the time. I'm not a perfect pastor. Hallelujah. We're not a perfect church. But this is a perfect place to call home because we serve a perfect God. Hallelujah. We'd love to have you be a part of us. I like to tell people, give us one year of your life. If things don't get any better, feel free to go anyplace else. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But I've got some witnesses here that can testify that since being a part of this ministry, their lives have gotten better. Hallelujah. Even when times got hard, their lives were still better. Amen. And so we'd love to have you here. Amen. You can text us. You can inbox us. Send us a message. 863. You can even call 420-5457. 863-420-5457. Now, if you're watching and those of you that are here, I want you, uh, if you didn't get a chance to sow earlier, to put a, uh, put, a, put a seed in the ground. Praise the Lord. There are some giving information that's coming up on your screen hallelujah and I want you to take part 
in in giving uh, with us on today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord for what God is doing. Those of you that are here that may have sown before, I dare you to put a faith seed on the word that has been spoken uh, on today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, except the grain fall into the ground and die, it won't bring forth much fruit. Every time you put a seed in the ground, hallelujah, I need you to trust that it's going to bring forth much fruit in your life. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. We bless the Lord. We bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The information is on your screen. You can give by Givelify. You can give by PayPal. You can give by Cash App. Hallelujah. I'm believing God. Hallelujah. We're believing God. What is it that we're believing God for? A hundred partners to sow $25. Is that it? $20. Praise the Lord. Would you believe God with a $20 seed with us on today? Hallelujah. A hundred, 100 of you. We've got over, um, over at least over 8,000 partners on our, with, uh, on our church page. If a hundred of you, glory to God, would sow that $20 seed, I believe, glory to God, that the Lord would bless you uh, as a result of your giving and I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart to all of you that give I'm telling you you make it possible for us to do initiatives like sleeves up and stride praise the Lord and we just want to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts we really really appreciate it I say this all the time almost every week we are a small church but we do big things because the vision is big big it's not just big but it's big big and it doesn't take a lot of people to do big things it doesn't take a lot of people to do great things it just takes the right people and I'm just blessed to have the right people as a part of this ministry that keep allowing us hallelujah and enabling us to be able to do the things that we do I'm telling you we are on the verge of some wonderful things hallelujah and I believe that God is going to prove himself even the more in our lives in this ministry in this church hallelujah I still believe I still believe that there is a place on television for us glory to God we're appreciative for things like the YLC network and thank God for those of you that sow into that to keep us on air as well amen but I believe that there's a place on major TV networks glory to God for us ABC NBC CNN CBS I just believe it Netflix hallelujah hallelujah I just believe that a contract or something is coming we'll be able to do a documentary or something glory to God hallelujah that will put all all of us, glory to God, in a greater place, hallelujah, that we'll be able to do ministry to a greater capacity and we'll be able to bless a lot more people, hallelujah. We're aiming, glory to God, for 30 people for our stride, shoe drive on this uh no next month amen glory to god i'm looking for the day that we're able to bless 300 children 3,000 children praise the lord 30,000 children at a time with brand new sneakers i'm looking for it i believe the day is coming more sooner than later and so we just want you to know that we appreciate you and we thank you for your giving and for every seed that you sow i can promise you one thing about this church the ground is good hallelujah hallelujah and we make sure hallelujah Hallelujah, that we use every seed that you sow to the upbuilding of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. One day you're going to look up and we're going to be building not just glory to God, the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. But we're going to be building a church. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. A building from the ground up. Hallelujah. I believe it's happening more sooner than later. Why? Because we've got potent potential. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to sit at some tables that we have not sat at before. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to be in invited into some boardrooms and have some conversations that we've never had before. I believe I'm getting ready to sign some contracts that I've never signed before. They'll change not just my tax bracket, but the tax bracket of those that are connected to me as well. I just believe, glory to God, that we're getting ready to sign on the dotted lines. Hallelujah. And we're about to own some stuff. Hallelujah. And we're going to walk into divine ownership. I believe that we're going to sign contracts 
flesh and the spirit that will take us to higher heights in the things of God, that we will function at greater capacities, that we will function at greater dimensions of power in the spirit, that when we sign the contract with God again, that we'll lay hands and cancer will dry up and AIDS will dry up. Oh, yes, Lord. Glory to God. I believe that we're going to be endowed with power like never before because of our obedience to what God has called us to do and to be. I give God praise and we thank God. We want you to know that we appreciate you. We really, really do. Thank you for tuning in with us today. Until next week, we say may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Again, if you want prayer, if you would like to be a part of this ministry, if you just need to talk to someone, feel free to call us, 863, text us, 863-420-5457. Expect God all throughout this week to do great things concerning you. Look for God to move in your life. Until next Sunday, God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Do me, the, do me a favor. I always ask this. Keep us in your prayers, me and all of Life Church. I promise we are doing the same for you. Come on, clap those hands. Let's give God praise.